Welcome to the Michigan Minds Podcast, a quick and informative analysis of today's top issues from University of Michigan faculty. My name is Danielle Reynolds. I'm the Assistant Director for Student Learning and Leadership at the Ginsburg Center. The Ginsburg Center is a space on campus where we're working towards the public good by stewarding relationships between the University of Michigan and community partners. In this, we work with community organizations, with faculty and academic programs, and with students, which is the work that I lead. I love our student engagement work because we're really living into my favorite part of the university's mission, educating students who are challenging the present to enrich the future. So that includes for me, supporting students as they engage with communities around them, providing leadership development with a focus on positive social change as well. The Pathways for Civic Engagement and Community Change is a framework that highlights six of the ways that we as members of communities can exercise our power in creating a society that works for everyone. It was developed by an international working group that's out of the Haas Center for Public Service at Stanford University. And we've adopted the framework and we'll be applying it to our own dynamic campus community along with some community and campus partners. So the pathways allow us to really look at a robust range of educational and engagement activities and practices. And so I can just describe the six pathways really briefly and give a couple of examples for each one to illuminate what people can be doing. So the first one is very timely, of course, it's policy and governance where people are participating in the democratic political processes and the governance that make up our public life. This might include voting. Um, It might also include filling out the U.S. Census. There are lots of different ways that people can contribute to public governance. The next one is community-engaged learning and research, which U of M has no shortage of opportunities for. That is where you're using your coursework, your research, and your learning to enrich knowledge and inform action around social issues that you care about. Um, So that might mean taking a community-engaged course. It could be even hosting a teach-in about an issue or a topic with your peers or with different colleagues. The next one is philanthropy. That's one that we're usually more used to, where you're providing funds and resources for organizations that contribute to the public good. You might be hosting or attending a fundraiser, hopefully learning about the organization and the issue as you're providing resources um, and maybe supporting them financially. And then we move into direct service also pretty common, where you are addressing immediate individual and community needs through direct interaction with others. This could be connecting to mutual aid efforts in your community. It might mean tutoring local youth um, or showing up at maybe a community garden. There are lots of different ways that people are doing um, direct service in our local community. The next is community organizing and activism, where you are maybe involving and mobilizing people to influence change in attitude, policy and culture. We've seen a lot of this lately um, with people attending and participating in demonstrations and protests, but then also it could be things like creating and signing a petition. There are lots of ways to do some of that organizing and activism. And then lastly, we have social entrepreneurship, where you would be using um, ethical business approaches to address social or environmental issues. And for some people, that might mean starting or supporting a company that is centering the needs of the environment, or for under-resourced or underserved communities. So these six different pathways provide different, but also interconnected, um, overlapping and reinforcing actions. I wanna name that this is not an exhaustive list, but there are, I think it's a really great and robust list of different ways that people can contribute. And we need representation from these multiple pathways in order to see the structural and meaningful change that we wanna see happening in our world. Um, It also kind of takes into account the fact that the issues that we care about are multidimensional and they require things like philanthropy and policy change and people who are doing organizing work in order to see the change that we want. So one of the first goals for the pathways is really to provide ways for us to reclaim our civic purpose. We are a public institution um, and our mission is to serve the people of Michigan and the people in our world. And we know that in order to do that, we have to take action. And the learning that we are doing, the research that is happening, those things need to be happening towards a purpose. And we see that as the purpose of that is to make our societies better than what they are right now. And so this provides lots of different pathways and lanes for people to continue doing that work. So I would say reclaiming our civic purpose is one of those goals. 
The next one is providing tangible ways to create change. So we, I think that whether it's a commercial or a sign that you might see, the term social change can sometimes feel a little bit more ubiquitous. And this provides some really tangible ways for people to go about creating that change. You want to tie it to real actions that you can start even today, as opposed to just saying, yes, I want to create change, but you don't necessarily know how you want to do that. And then the last one I would say is to really highlight the work that people can do at the University of Michigan and beyond. I mentioned this earlier, but all of the different pathways are represented here on campus and off of our campus as well. If someone wanted to explore more around community organizing and activism, they could explore the community action and social change minor at the School of Social Work. If they really cared about community engaged learning, um, programs like Semester in Detroit and the Residential College are doing some incredible work there. And then if you are really just wanting to do some more direct service, we have an online um, volunteer database called Connect to Community, which can connect you to real-time needs and priorities in our community that people can just sign up for, respond to, and start doing some work today. So there are a wealth of information, a wealth of opportunities and activities for people to get connected to. Um, and this gives a really great way for us to highlight that work, um, especially for students that are really trying to find those things now um, and they're not able to find them, that they can take a look at these pathways and find some new, um, maybe new opportunities to them. Democracy is a practice. And in order for us to continue our um, democratic society and the things that are important to us, it takes us all doing some sort of action, some contribution to our society. I really like the phrase habits of democracy because it shows that these are things that we have to continue exercising and continue doing in order to form the societies that we want to see. It's not something to take for granted. And so as we approach this democracy theme semester, wanting to highlight the different ways that people can be practicing those habits of democracy. And these pathways, I think, align. I think that they leverage and complement the theme semester because it um, highlights some of those different habits, as I mentioned, um, but that also, again, gives people tangible things that they can be doing. I'm really looking forward to the theme semester because I imagine there are going to be incredible learning opportunities, incredible opportunities for people to have conversations. And I'm hopeful that the pathways are going to illuminate some courses of action that people can take in our local community, on our campus, to help create the change, like I said, that we want to see. I'm going to talk about two things that I find mo most exciting and inspiring about the pathways. The first is that there are multiple pathways towards change. The things that draw you to your pathway or your pathways, you can have more than one, of course, are things like your interests, your skills, your identities, your motivations. And if we think about what a thriving, diverse democracy looks like, it's almost like a potluck. I love a good metaphor, so I'll use a potluck metaphor, where everyone is bringing their best dish, or maybe you're bringing the compostable cups if you're running late that day, but you're bringing the things that you do best. And what happens is that when we bring those things to the table, everyone leaves with a much more robust plate. And if we want that to happen in terms of social change, in order to have the robust structural change that we want, People have to be bringing their own unique selves, their own unique skills, ideas, motivations, um, identities to their work. And I think that the pathways just really show, or hopefully will show, a way for us to see that really that diversity of effort and input that we know is going to be so incredibly important for us to live in a thriving society. The next one is recognizing that a lot of people are feeling stuck right now. There's a lot happening in our world. We have a pandemic that is impacting every part of our lives. We're seeing more examples of state-sanctioned violence, of anti-Black racism, of hate crimes against Asian folks. And we know that this is also compounded by an uncertain fall semester and an election that's coming up in November. And so when you think about all of these things that are causing some uncertainty for people, we can feel a little bit stuck. And I think that that's the technical term for it, feeling stuck. So the pathways are hopefully going to give people, like I said, tangible ways that they can pursue some change, that they can learn about what their own contributions to society can be, and hopefully engage in some of this like cognitive liberation that's going to allow you to take action to create the world that you would want to see around you. Again, the pathways can be explored and pursued on and off campus. And as we think about what the impact of um, COVID-19 has in our communities and the places that we're able to go, all of them can also be pursued in ways that are physically distant. 
Um, and so there are lots of different ways for people to contribute and want to make sure that folks know um, that you can pursue them here at the University of Michigan and beyond. There is no best pathway. I know that I have some that I am more partial to and that's okay, but recognizing that for each person that's going to show up differently for them and that's something that's incredibly important because again in order to see structural sustainable change we need people at each of these different pathways and if you think about social movements that have been more long-term more sustainable you will see multiple of those pathways working together in order to address that change and then the last one is recognizing that you can engage in these different pathways, but you don't always have to be the leader. You do not always have to be at the forefront of each one. So an example that I gave earlier around community organizing and activism around maybe creating or signing a petition. You do not need to create every single petition. And actually our society works a lot better if some people are learning and some people who are very passionate and very knowledgeable about issues are doing some of that front of the line work. And so how do we kind of balance where we need to be learning, where we need to be listening, where we need to be supporting the work that's already happening, and also where are the times where we need to be at the forefront, where we need to be speaking up, saying something, and starting a new initiative. And so those are some things that I hope that people would take away from this pathway kind of framework, and hopefully things that we'll be able to highlight as we continue doing some more of this work on campus. A couple things that I would want to add. One is that there is going to be a corresponding um, inventory that enables students um, to explore some of the different social issues that are important to them and also maybe their preferred pathways to address them. So we're really excited about that, that inventory that's going to be live um, this fall where if someone wants to explore like, which pathway might be for me, I'm reading these descriptions and all of them sound good, or maybe a couple of them sound really good. There will be a, an inventory that allows you to answer some really great questions that might help you to illuminate which ones are going to be best for you. And then also, I love sharing information about the pathways, but I don't want people to think that this is not an invitation. It absolutely is. In order for this um, framework to work, in order for it to um, have the hopefully really positive impact we want it to have on campus, it requires partnership. And so this is absolutely an invitation to further explore what the pathways could look like across campus with different campus partners. And so if you are hearing this and you are like, yes, I absolutely, I love this framework. I really want to use it. This is consider this a formal invitation to partner with the Ginsburg Center. We'd love to work with you so that we can really get students and ourselves as faculty and staff really engaged in the community in ways that are going to have some tangible and long lasting positive impact. Thank you for listening to the Michigan Minds podcast, a production of the University of Michigan. Join the conversation on social media with hashtag UMichImpact.